All right, we'll be cracking some password hashes here with Hashcat in this video. Definitely something that is really good to know as a security professional, whether it be for OSCP or CTFs or just being way more efficient on the job. This is definitely something handy to know. So yeah, definitely stay tuned if this seems of interest to you. Hey guys, what's up? This is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Now, the first thing that I want to really get across here to you is that even though you see me here in a VM, I'm in the virtual environment on Kali Linux, you always want to do this on a, on a host machine, on your actual host computer, right? I'm running Windows as my host operating system. Uh, so when I actually perform the uh, password the hash cracking here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do it on my Windows system. Uh, I don't know how to change this, but this is very small. This text is very small. So I'm going to first type it in on my VM where you guys can clearly see stuff a lot easier. But when I run the command, ultimately, and I crack the password that I'm about to crack, I will do it on my host machine, as should you. And the reason for that is that in virtualization, uh, it's going to be a lot slower because your biggest limitation uh, is your computer's resources when it comes to cracking hashes uh, and things like that. Particularly, it uses a lot of your GPU's computing power, right? And when you're in a virtualized environment, you're using a virtualized graphics card, and that thing is going to be a lot slower. And, of course, your other resources are a lot uh slower than on your host machine as well, right? Because it's all virtualized hardware when it comes to VMs. So it's just going to run so much faster and so much smoother on your host machine. So what you want to do is you want to download Hashcat uh, off the website onto your host machine. And I've already done that. I've already set it up here. It's in my documents folder under Hashcat 500. And uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a, uh, a hash that you might find in an Etsy shadow file, right? An MD5 crypt hash is what this is in particular. So that's what we're going to be playing with here. Now, particularly the one that I have, the hash that I'm going to use for this example would be this hash right here. Now, when it comes to identifying hashes, there's a couple ways to do this. Usually, the way that I do it is I will go to this Hashcat page here. Let me just open up a web browser. I'll show you the way I typically do this. I would type in uh, Hashcat example hashes. It'll take you to this URL. Let me just Google search it in the way I normally would. I would say Hashcat example hashes. And what that should pull up is if uh, if I can find this right. Let's see. I'm not seeing it here in the output. Interestingly enough, I guess that is the curse of creating this one on the fly. But uh, what you should find, if you don't find anywhere, you should find this URL here. Um, example hashes, and it probably wouldn't be too hard to find it from the site we're on earlier, because it is the same site, just a different. URI here, but you want to get to this page. And let me go ahead and see if I can zoom in at all here to make this a little bit more readable for you guys at home. Yeah, that should be good. And uh, the way that I normally identify hashes is I'll do a control F on the page. And if you remember going back here, it starts with a dollar sign, a one and another dollar sign. I normally take the first two or th two to three characters I would search them on the page. So dollar sign one, dollar sign. And now, now we see here that uh, it is MD5 crypt. And that the code for that is 500. The code is the part that's really important, as you'll see here in a second. So that's uh, one way you can do it. And you can use that method to identify a hash, right? If it was like dollar sign P dollar sign, it would be PHP pass, WordPress MD5 or Joomla MD5, right? But in this case, we're dealing with MD5 crypt, we found out. But another way we can determine this is if you're in Kali Linux, you can use hash identifier, okay? And then we just simply put in the hash, and uh, it's like I got to recopy that. We put in this hash here, 
and it'll say, hey, possible hashes, MD5, Unix, right? So a couple of different ways to find it. The reason that I normally prefer this way is you have everything in one place. So not only will you identify which hash it is, you'll also see the code here, right? If we just did it this way, we'd have to then search. We'd just have to come here anyways to find out what code corresponds to it, you know? And that might be a little bit tricky. So that's why I prefer just to use the example hashes page here. So now that we have that bit of information, what we're gonna do, and let's see, I should have, I think by default you will have hashcat on Kali, but what I would need to do is I would say hashcat dash M and then the code, right? 500, but actually before all this, let me, let me rewind a little bit back here for a second. What you would need to do is, you know, go wherever you're gonna store this stuff and you would need to create a file called hashes.txt and uh, that's where the hash goes, right? And on top of that, you would need to use a word list. Like for example, say you had a rocku.txt, right? And we'll just imagine, we'll just pretend that uh, this is the real rocku.txt with all the, all the potential passwords in it, right? You'll need a word list file, right? So if you're familiar with doing any kind of password brute forcing unit, you know, you always got to use a word list to, uh, to compare it with, right? So you can find the potential password, right? So we'll just pretend this is the real rocku.txt with like, you know, a million lines or whatever, however many lines are in rocku.txt. But uh, basically what we do from here is we say hashcat dash M and then 500 because that's the code that corresponds to MD5 crypt. And then we would say hashes.txt, you know, the name of our hashes file and then the name of our wordless file, rocku.txt. We hit enter and then it would, you know, attempt to crack the hash and return what the password is for that. Now, in, in our case, like I said, I'm not gonna run this from my VM because it's uh, gonna be way drastically slower. I'm gonna run this from my host machine. So basically I'm gonna be running exactly what I had talked about before. And uh, so let, let's do exactly that. In, in this case, let me just show you what's in here. I know this is gonna be pretty hard to see, but uh, just bear with me for a second here. I have a rocky.txt file here already. And I actually created on my computer, I created the, I'll show you, the hashes.txt file. Let me just pull that up really quickly here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I open hashes.txt, I just have the file with the hash in there, right? Just the same way as I did it before. And in this case, when you download it for Windows, there's actually a, a file called hashcat64.exe. That's a 64-bit version, which is what you want to run if you're on a 64-bit system. So I'm going to run that, and I'm going to say dash M, 500, and then hashes.txt is our hashes file and then rocky.txt is our wordless file. So I'll hit enter, and then it will attempt to brute force it. And it's gonna, as you see here, <laughs> it might be lagging my stuff because I'm recording while I'm doing this. Hopefully it's not too bad because uh, it is using my graphics card quite intensely here. But uh, this is what you wanna look for here, status cracked, okay? And what that means is it did crack the password. If we look up here, the password is password. So this hash here, this MD5 crypt hash, uh, hash corresponded to a password of password. So the easier the password is, the more simple the password is, the quicker you're gonna be able to crack it uh, in general. So this one was pretty simple, so we got it pretty quickly, but you will notice it is drastically different uh, cracking this using your GPU on your host system versus if I did this uh, through here. But uh, I'm not gonna demo that in this video because that might take a while and it'll be intensive on, on this poor little VM here. So we won't do that, but yeah, hopefully this made sense to you. If there's any questions or anything, let me know down in the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button as well to help get the content uh, out here to more eyes, people that need to see this, might be struggling with it, whatever the case may be. And if you're eager to learn more about, you know, this type of stuff, what you would need to know for OSCP, definitely check out the playlist that's on screen now. And I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.